I hate wrenching on cars, yeah. but I'm learning so much. <laughs> Welcome to the shop. I'm Jared, and this is Wrench Every Day. And next to me is that 2005 uh, Bluebird Microbus that my friends dropped off after their amazing cross-country adventure and uh, said, figure out what's wrong with it and fix it for us. Well, there, there's a lot wrong. Namely, the thing gets hot. Your oil gets hot, your transmission gets hot, and that makes the coolant get hot. So uh, that prevents any type of fun driving. Uh, if you go too quickly, it slows you right back down and uh, 70 mile an hour limited stickers turns out to be the truth. Also, uh, they lived in it for a week and it's disgusting inside and uh, I told them they had to come take care of that part of it and we have some other absolutely crazy plans for this bus to get it ready for another adventure. But again, the most important thing we need to solve is it's overheating. The transmission cooler is way too small and they had that genius little hand pump idea and uh, we had fun watching Tavares pump away on it. Ah, ah, my pump! <laughs> and I figure there's no better insurance to save your engine than an improved engine oil cooler and an improved transmission cooler because uh, no one likes high temperatures and uh, Speaking of good insurance, today's sponsor, Policy Genius, will help you find yours. Two of your most expensive assets are going to be your home and your automobiles. And two of your most precious resources are your time and money. Isn't it great that there's a company out there looking to help you protect and save all four of those things? Spooky season is coming up, and it's never been more important to protect your home and automobile from uh, mischief. Now, there's never a bad time to use Policy Genius to check and make sure you're saving as much money as possible on those home and auto insurance policies. Policy Genius makes it incredibly easy to compare home and auto policies all in one place. They can help you find home and auto coverage just like you have now, but at a lower cost. They've saved customers an average of $1,250 per year over what they were paying for home and auto insurance. That's a new set of really good tires, uh, brakes, uh, or really cheap tires and wheels. Getting started is easy. First, you head on over to policygenius.com slash wrench, answer a few quick questions about yourself and your property. Then Policy Genius takes it from there. They'll compare rates from America's top insurers, from Progressive to Allstate, and find your lowest rate. The Policy Genius team can also look for more ways to save you money, like bundling your home and auto insurance together. If they find you a lower rate than what you're paying now, they'll help switch you over for free. Their top-notch customer service has earned Policy Genius thousands of five-star reviews across Trustpilot and Google. If you're ready to make sure you're protecting your assets and uh, saving all the resources you can, head on over right now to policygenius.com slash wrench and get started today. Policy Genius, when it comes to insurance, it's nice to get it right. And with any big project, we have the unboxing phase. Started just randomly getting boxes showing up to the house and I opened one of them and these are the little vortex generators, which um, would involve aerodynamics. And uh, that's not aerodynamic. But you're also gonna see several people popping in. One of them, this is Larry. Larry, you're, you're in charge of aerodynamics. So what exactly do these little plastic tidbits do? So what these little plastic tidbits do is, as the air is coming over the bus, it starts creating a vacuum and just sucking the bus down. And these break up the airflow so that you get actually pass through the air better. It's a bus. But <laughs> but I, I agree. He's that, that is the right choice. Again, we're we're getting ready to take this bus on another insane adventure. I get to be a part of it, so we're doing some nut stuff. One, that's the new transmission cooler. In the previous one, with the water cooler, it basically came to here and to about there. And this is just a factory Ford part for a slightly newer truck and should theoretically bolt directly in for us and uh, not only increase capacity, increase cooling. That box will open up later. That is a new left front knuckle. One thing I did know about the bus's problems from the rally was it exploded a left front wheel bearing to the point that the wheel almost came off, right? Uh, yeah, in fact, I was driving at that time, and uh, all of a sudden, the bus just started shuddering, and I was like, oh, crap, we blew a tire. I'm like, no, it's worse than that. Yeah. Got it over to the side of the road, and fortunately, Jared was there to help us yeah. fix it. If there was a car, I would break it. <laughs> 
I got a wow. big. Uh, well, no, this is coming down normal like that. That's a normal yeah, taper on it. Yeah, it's a normal right. taper. Yeah, but that's the other one, one maybe got the, the back one looks. could be welded on. Yeah. Yeah. This is an air dam and a bug guard. Once again, that, that's the aerodynamic principles, yeah, right? Yeah, so exactly. So about 25% of the drag on a school bus is underneath. Um, so the air dam there is to actually deflect that air out from underneath. We're actually looking at potentially putting side skirts on this. Yeah, we, we started this morning talking about and taking measurements to run side skirts and wheel covers. Exactly, exactly. And then the, the bug deflector too, there's a, a big vortex that's created right at the front over the top of the bus. And that bug deflector is to push the air up and over the bus to avoid that. Yeah, and, that, and again, that's where we've been looking and talking about coming up with a solution to keep air moving around there and not just damming up really bad. So way too much thought into this and it should be fun. We've got another team member just pulling up. And then in these two big boxes are our engine oil cooler. A known catastrophic problem with the six liter is its engine oil cooler. It leaves, lives deep in the valley, shares with coolant, and just fails and blocks up. So all of these parts, those two big boxes are from Bulletproof Diesel, which go to an external oil cooler. So, hi Henry. Hey Jared, how are you? Very good. It's been more than 30 seconds, so damn it Henry. Damn it Henry. <laughs> <laughs> so. This, this is uh this is your brainchild. Yeah, well JP. Yeah. JP, he's not here yet, but it is him. I blame him. Yeah. And uh Henry is the gentleman I did the Honda Rousey rally with and she will be coming back. Uh now that I have my own space and things aren't going to constantly get borrowed and moved, we can uh, drag her out of storage once, you know, other large things are out of the way. So, we'll get into a little bit more details of the full unboxing. Actually, let's pull this one open, and then we're gonna get to work, because there is a lot to do. Oh, man. I can already see pretty billet parts. Oh, there you go. This is, oh. And it's pink. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I like? Like, when it comes with a proper install manual. There you go. Wow. So, this is the part that changes over the entire oil filter housing oil cooler assembly. This is a lot of work. Your fuel filter, I believe, no, that's your oil filter. It tells you everywhere you need to tap into, and the big changes are underneath here. This is where on a factory setup you would have the oil cooler bolted to it, coolant coming into it. This is set up to bypass, this feeds the high pressure fuel pump uh, oil re reserve, and what I like, Safety wired in, done incredibly well. Like this is a nice piece and it wasn't the $4,000 one. I think it wasn't cheap. It wasn't cheap, but it wasn't $4,000. Everyone else <laughs> was wanting $4,000 for this and I think it came in at 2,400. Yeah, something like that. Some, not, not cheap, but if you keep blowing up engines or going through a factory oil cooler every year and a half, this is a pretty good option. So, man, all oh, this is really nice. So. I'm excited to get to installing that, so I'm gonna start digging the doghouse out. That's what uh, covers the engine there, and it's gonna be a struggle to kind of work through it because normally you have some front clearance. There's no front clearance. There's hardly any rear clearance, so that's my fun. And then again, uh, you, get, you can deal with that. <laughs> we made the mess. We can clean it up. <laughs> Uh, not as much of a 
Well, no, it's still a bus, but it doesn't have as much on it. Are you having fun wrenching? We're having fun wrenching. So we are draining fluids now that the bumper finally came off. What did we just discover in our instructions? Uh, we discovered that sometimes you actually should read the manual first because we actually have to pull the bumper mounts off to mount the oil cooler. So what I've been working on inside is the other half of getting to our oil cooler, which is way up there. Um, got the turbo off, which we are going to take apart and take a look at the variable vanes inside of it because we were getting some boosting codes, which generally means those are stuck. So. I have the joy of laying in here and working on uh, getting that intake manifold off so we can finish pulling all of that assembly up there off. And uh, the bus looks a little bit cleaner. Let's uh, show what Larry's been up to. Uh. So powered cooler, sink, uh, fluids, Lightning McQueen, uh, some uh, lunch there, uh, more, more tribbles. tribbles. How, what's the triple count to? Oh gosh, we're well over a dozen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, Jarl. Yeah, thanks, Jarl. There. Yeah, there's a lot more down there. So that is the trouble with tribbles. I mean, there's an inflatable cupcake. What, what were you guys doing? Uh, I, there's a nun outfit, oh, and a lot more tribbles. So. Uh, a lot more tribbles. Oh, we got to show the transmission cooler. Oh yeah. So we showed how much bigger it was. This is a. Ford F-350, a truck transmission cooler. And uh, it, it doesn't fit in the hole. <laughs> it goes, <laughs> goes like that. So we are gonna have to uh, do some cutting and modifying of the bracket. But again, there's that, and there's what they gave the bus, which makes no sense at all. You know, yes, a truck is towing and has the high tow ratings. This is a bus. It, it makes heat, so we're gonna get that in. So I, I feel optimistic that we are uh, on the right direction to fix all of our heating issues. So uh, lunch and back to work. And we've got the turbo on the bench and broken apart. Mm -hmm. Something 6.0 Power Stroke owners have experienced are boost and turbo control problems. And that all lies within this really cool variable geometry setup. And there's been times that you can pull, I've pulled a turbo part and this reaction ring is completely seized. But these blades are moving, but if we come to the turbo, you can see carbon tracing. And this surface here should be a little bit smoother and cleaner, as this reaction ring would have been regularly turning against it. So, we most likely had that intermittent boost code because this was seizing. So we're going to come through with the wire brush, get this clean to a nice clean surface, put some high temp a very small amount of high temp lube here because if you go too much it then gums up and will lock it up that way we'll clean up these surfaces here and get the turbo put back together then we're back inside and tearing everything apart there henry and larry have test fitted the oil cooler in the bumper it looks very nice there and now all of this is going to be coming apart and they're going to strip this whole center and cut the cross member here to clear for our truck cooler and uh it's fun right it's fun i want the record to show <laughs> that we drove this thing for 5,000 miles from seattle to santa fe to houston to buffalo to st louis to georgia without ever throwing a code and the minute we give it to jared it's throwing turbo codes what you're saying is you drove it really hard and broke it yeah <laughs> damn it henry damn it jared <laughs> All right, so we have more of the bus torn apart. We can now see the cooling fan. We fought with that a lot harder than uh, probably should have. Henry is wearing a lot of transmission fluid, and uh, we've picked up one more worker. Hi, Hi, JP. Hi, everybody. So this is another member that rallied the bus. I was driving the media, and uh, he broke it good. Yes, I am responsible for breaking all the vehicles. So, so we have so much to get done. It's basically, we called in everyone who wants to uh, take Henry's short bus on its uh, next adventure to come in to wrench through the weekend. Um, that, and they can also kind of let me know what else they have uh, didn't tell me about that was broken. <laughs> so we, uh, we're at the point that all three of us kind of need to work in the exact same area. JP is going to take all of our coolers, the intercooler, brand new radiator, an AC condenser outside and degrease and uh, clean all that fuzz, which is going to uh, be affecting our airflow. So, uh, what do you say, Henry? 
Time to get to work. You know what happens when you pull the oil cooler when somebody's working under the bus? <laughs> so, so Henry was laying underneath to pull the AC compressor, and I lifted the oil cooler and let it sit, and not a single drop came out. At least at first. And then I moved it all of like an eighth of an inch more. <laughs> Henry got a shower, the fan got a shower, uh, the floor got a shower. Oh, that's okay. But if we take a look, this is the oil cooler matrix. There is a ton of layers, if you cut this open, where you will see the coolant that passes and the oil that passes. Again, it lives in the valley of the engine, which is an incredibly hot spot. This is an incredibly, it's a decent design, but when you stuff it deep inside an engine, it's just going to cook. So you can see how small that air and water matrix assembly is. If we come over here, this is that new cooler. This is a massive air to air style system with an oil thermostat that mounts to the bumper into this opening here that is going to do a fantastic job. This is a kit that they sell specifically for ambulances and other extreme use cases and uh, I think we've got an extreme use case plan for this. Outside, oh, we're going into another disc. We're going into uh, I think our fourth or fifth disc. The here. fourth or fifth disc. They're carefully, instead of just straight up cutting this entire chunk out they're very slowly notching it so we maintain some yeah. of this structure we're uh so you can see we're almost there they're separating that and that's going to give us plenty of room there. Do that for safety purposes, right? yep <laughs> so i wasn't uh running cameras everywhere jp was awesome and went ahead and threw one up and recorded a little footage he'll send to me so we can insert that earlier now whatever Dwayne wants As you can tell, it's gotten dark. Uh, Jay, another dust baller, swang by to uh, give us a hand and he actually thought we might have time to go to dinner. Uh, unfortunately, when you're trying to do a million things to a bus in two days, there's not time for dinner. So he ran out to get us dinner so we can keep working. Uh, what do you think so far? Well, we're wrenching. We wrenched every day and we wrenched all day and now you're wrenching into the night. So yeah, late into the doing. night. Another thing uh, JP took care of for us is he cleaned up our radiator even though the radiator is new but he got the radiator the intercooler and the ac condenser cleaned up spotless again if this is something you're running into spotty overheating it is very very common between all of your heat exchangers to end up with that pollen fur uh birds you can find anything sasquatch hair in there <laughs> sasquatch hair um a really good thing simple green any type of degreaser soak it on there really good Hose it off another layer of that degreaser with a little bit of gentle brushing and uh, they look like brand new so still a lot of work to do I need to transfer parts off of this onto that new assembly and uh, start rebuilding. Let's do a morning update. Uh, friend JP is slowly deciding what is uh, worth keeping out of that giant pile because that mess was uh, bothering me a little bit, just having to walk around it. Uh, we've got 
Larry reinstalling our new AC compressor that came with a new line kit, and it went in a lot easier than it came out. Uh, <laughs> Henry fought We're and fought. still doing it wrong. God dang it. <laughs> and uh, Hen the benefit, too, he's like, I didn't want to put it together. It's, it's a mess. And I'm like, all the fluids are done dripping. Yeah, I know. But you took, took trans-fluid engine oil... AC. AC pag oil. Yeah. And then we had a tray under there, and he then rested his head in it. So <laughs> it did not go very well for him, yeah, but... It was all right. It was fun. I got in. I've got the intake manifold in. I'm about to torque it, and I'm going to try to get all of what I need to do at the front done, because we're nearing the point that the bumper goes on, and all the front parts go back in, and all three of us need to be working in the exact same position, which... Uh, didn't quite work out. And then uh, breaking wrench everyday roadside assistance. You noticed last night our friend Jay stopped by and uh, he has that vehicle. And shortly after we left the shop late at night, I get a call. Hey, I lost power steering. I think I lost the serpentine belt. And uh, it, it exploded just a little bit. Just a little bit. So run back to the shop, grab the trailer. We rescued him and... Uh, he got to sleep and ordered a bunch of parts to uh, fix it. I'm greatly indebted. So, uh, yeah. Maybe next time we'll stick with the motto. What do you think, Henry? What, you're on, are you on your own? Yeah, there yeah. was. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we had a solution. It may be a well-known thing. On these little bumperettes, when you go to take them off, the bolts are just formed into the plastic. So when you go to unbolt it, they'll start spinning. What we were able to do is unbolt the cover the hard way, get behind and hold the back side of the bolt and then you guys just you heated it with a Probate torch, torch yeah. got yeah, it hot yeah. enough and melted it into the plastic and some epoxy and on top to seal it off. we probably could have called ford and those would have been like four or five dollar parts probably. But, <laughs> but we fixed our own eight o'clock at night we weren't yeah exactly so but uh again we have a lot to do because we're hoping to start it this evening we are uh, halfway through 11 and there's still a lot to go there's there's still no turbo there JP and Larry taking over Wrench Every Day for a moment. We're now the JP and Larry Show. Da, 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 JP and Larry Show. Da, 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 da. Larry, can you give us an update on what's going on with the bus? Well, uh, we got the condenser in for the air conditioning. Uh, problem is getting all the lines reinstalled. Uh, there's a funky fitting under there that I got to get this uh, directly on. And uh, it's kind of hard to get to. Obviously, I'm up on a ladder to try to get into it. <laughs> and then, uh, because bad news always comes in threes, <laughs> we're going to check this side also. <laughs> and then wonder what the third thing is going to go wrong. Uh, on our end, we got all this stuff cleaned up for the most part. 
and we got the bus vacuumed out pretty well. Uh, we are taking care of our little project here. Uh, I am rigging a cargo net uh, onto the top of our uh, of our bunk bed area. Um, the decision was to keep the to keep the mattress. Uh, we're going to put some gear on top here so it won't go sliding around. And then we've got a uh, cargo net over there, so we're going to uh, hopefully keep things from flying forward or backwards as this bus is moving. So uh, right now I drilled some holes. I've got these little uh, screws in there, and we're securing it with these carabiners. And I'm going to do the same to the back. So that is how the interior of this bus is looking and coming along. And hopefully uh, by the end of today we'll have some serious progress to make. Jared, how are you yeah. feeling about things? Uh, we've made serious projects. Can we do enough? I don't know. Our goal is to have it close to ready to start, if not started, because we lose Henry in the morning and he took the whole front of the, the bus, the bodywork off. So I'd like him to put it back on. Oh, Until <laughs> So this is one of these projects where we do a whole lot of work and you see us moving around in the time lapses and then I turn on this camera it doesn't look like we really did anything. Um, we have got intake manifold on, alternator on, the whole front accessories on. Larry is finishing up the AC line so we did a AC compressor upgrade retrofit which was cheaper than the original one and included the line which happened to have the repaired fitting because the old AC line was broken there. Well, it took him twice as long to get it on as it took me to get it off. Yeah. <laughs> it went on really easy and <laughs> look, there, there's not hardly any grease on you so I, I don't know what was going on. The other thing and this was the one bit that I knew had happened on the rally is the complete and catastrophic wheel bearing failure and it destroyed this spindle. If you look and see how rough that is compared to our new used one but on the side of the road, we didn't have an option and we just had to force the wheel bearing on to get it here. So Henry is uh, finished getting it off. We had to beat it with a hammer. Thank you, and Jared. Just look, there's a lot of years of just greasing. Normally, I don't even wear gloves most of the time. <laughs> um, some people like to go off the, I'm just gonna squeeze grease onto the grease fitting until it comes pouring out. Well, this is what happens if every time once a week, twice a week, they just start squeezing until grease comes out. It coats everything and makes JP worried there's something catastrophically wrong Always. with it. Well, let me see if there's enough light to show you this new oil filter adapter that goes to our massive oil cooler. So uh, there's enough light that you can see right there. That now takes an external spin on filter instead of the traditional cartridge filter that a power stroke would have. It's got some really nice lines that goes forward and retaining brackets that were a nightmare to fit with, you know, a quarter inch of clearance for my big fingers. But that is in and fitted. We have all our fluids out. We have Larry at my amazing workbench that I put together one night before, finishing up the brackets for our massive F350 cooler and you're working on keeping the deflectors and everything so that's going well and then we've got JP trimming plastic is that still the power steering mount or yes, the power steering mount we are oh, trimming it to use a Ford OEM part on the vehicle nice so keep that going so we are making a lot of progress if you look outside it has gone dark once again we lose Henry bright and early but we're gonna try to push through to see if we can get her to fire up so all that has to happen tomorrow is uh, aerodynamics because you know a giant rectangle needs aerodynamics I hate wrenching on cars but I'm learning so much <laughs> this stuff goes on and it doesn't want to be there I need to force it to be there are you done just, huh are you done no I haven't got it yet it's just like That's why? It's I don't right. know that it doesn't want to be there I'm just like beating it as a mission to be it's there one eight millimeter bolt <laughs> no, just one bolt it doesn't want to be there I'm like Please, oh, but it, no, there's no please. It's just like you gotta just like get in there. No, no. <sighs> Assert your you. will, JP. Assert no, your will. That's what it's about. So, to give a full progress update, 
It looks oh. more like a vehicle now, and yeah. uh, JP still hasn't bolted the fan shroud on, but <laughs> we've gotten I've gotten the engine fully together. Got the transmission cooler. Larry on. and Henry have finished the trans the massive transmission cooler upgrade. Yep. And that is plumb. And we're ready uh, to bolt on the oil cooler. As, yeah. soon as, as soon as somebody gets one single 8mm bolt in, we can bolt on the oil cooler and be all set. Uh, we still yeah. need to... Put the crash sensor I mean, can, on. Yeah, yeah the crash have, sensor. Well, my you want that. on you to have that I've, done before, JP. I've only that. got one bolt. I mean, for it. <laughs> I did learn something. <laughs> I did learn there's actually an independent sensor for a air, for an airbag. I had no idea. There's I, usually I, lots of them. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was just like, and then something happens, but it's like, it's magic. there's actually a sensor that crushes in it's the car magic. Right. Play, yeah. <laughs> usually, the way most of those sensors work, the earlier ones. It's a ball bearing in a specific track, and after a certain amount of G-load, that bearing moves oh. and closes a circuit. I, it's magic simplicity. I had no idea, but that's why so we do this. Right. Right. Uh, so we will find yeah, that bolt, but if we look down in here, that finally looks assembled. Everything yeah. is connected. We are to the point that we can almost start pouring fluids in. We can go ahead and get our coolant and our distilled water going as the cooling system's fully intact and together but we're still again we got to get that bumper on so we can have the oil cooler in place with the engine not running it shouldn't pump oil through it but rather than dumping a bunch of oil on the ground we're going to go ahead and, and wait to get that taken care of uh, let's see how the light is in here that's it's close so we've got our turbo in the up pipes fully assembled again everything in here is ready to go we don't have the dog box back in just in case there are any error codes it's not uncommon again this is an old harness we've moved a lot of things and there's a chance that a connector didn't fully seat and we want as much access as we can to get to all of it plus we'll be able to check it for exhaust leaks and coolant leaks oil leaks anything uh as we go ahead and put it back together and finally fire it to life so our goal was to start it about six hours ago. Realistically, for as much work as we're doing and as many hands are kind of running around and needing to work in the same area, to kind of only be six hours behind, I'm really proud of everyone who came out. Um, again, we've got an insane adventure planned for this thing, even probably a little more extreme than taking it on a rally, but uh, it should be fun. We're going to uh, hopefully motivate JP to get that last bolt in Larry's gonna get his two bolts in and uh, and then we will go ahead and get that bumper on and uh, fill it with fluids and prime it to life because Henry you've got to leave for your flight in what five hours yeah something like that now I'm expecting it to be a little difficult to start because we've had the fuel filters off all the oiling system apart so he is on Oh, yep. we're here priming up a little bit. Yeah. Blow plugs going. We're going to do a couple key cycles. Oh, come on, baby. It's good to hear the glow plugs going. All right, and she's going to crank and churn slowly, and then fire. That's my my guess. And. trimming the little bits of the grill that we need to to make room for all of our coolers but man everything came in here so again this massive transmission cooler that is a stock truck uh, transmission cooler that really should have just been in it to begin with uh, and uh, we're gonna get that in get the transmission fluid topped up and then uh, sticker and arrow time because I think we've got two and a half or three hours before you're heading to the airport right 
That's right. Gotta so, go back to Houston. A <laughs> little bit of a crunch time, but we're gonna get this done, make this thing awesome, and uh, if you make it all the way to the very end, we might give you a small hint of why a bunch of crazy guys are doing a lot of expensive, silly modifications to a short bus. show you this arrow the well that's still the same because our new part didn't fit bug deflector that does a lot more than you would think for getting air up and over the cab to send it directly into the ball there but <laughs> to help with our other turbulence is we've got jp and larry putting on these little dragon spikes they're the vortex generators or really i guess vortex breakers um, breakers, yeah. What happens on these big square surfaces, you have air that will start to tumble and make this really hard circle, and that creates an additional wall, can cause high pressure, low pressure, all kinds of just really bad air. So by using these breakers, we're hopefully going to stop that and get the air to go a little bit smoother. But we are all but out of time for the weekend, so we're not going to get the rears on. I'm going to have to fab this front lip in, and uh, hopefully we're going to go for a drive here as soon as we... Uh, Actually, here, get off the ladder. Let's take the ladder down okay. and just see how well JP holds on. <laughs> okay. Thanks to our, thanks to our low-pressure area up here, I think I'll be stable. <laughs> Netting up here to put our luggage, tools, etc. But still left the mattress in case we need two beds. Um, very nice uh, plywood, very nice steel construction. The seats are wonderful. You can see they recline. Got <laughs> foot rests, very comfortable. Uh, we'll put the uh, cooler back in too. We've got a huge cooler so we can have refreshing beverages on our uh, voyages. <laughs> so we are now cruising at the same speeds that Freddie and I were cruising where these all were at critical temperatures. Transmission is running almost 60 degrees cooler than we saw it. Coolant is stabled about the same and oil is 30, 35 degrees lower, maintaining the same or slightly faster cruising speed. So. I think we're good to uh, take it on its next trip. We need to hurry up and get these guys back. And uh, once I wrap up the aerodynamic mods of Larry, we'll go into details about uh, Mr. Sanders' magical adventure bus. <laughs> Departed. This ridiculous rally bus has transformed a lot. Let's check this thing out. So you saw briefly, the light makes it hard to see. We have our dragon spikes along the top. That is the dragon bus now. Uh, little arrow deflectors. We have a bug guard. This seems kind of silly, is just on its own. But again, it works to help start pushing that air up and over and away from the big wall. And the big thing is this new air dam. It is for a newer bus style it's what we got there's some gaps in it but that is okay because we're going to come back with some seam sealer body adhesive and fill all of that in but again the point of this is to minimize the amount of air that can get under the bus and can throw to the sides of it the design of it covers the wheel where this old you know kind of puny one here you can see how uh, small that was that didn't even cover the tires so that became another blockage 
So they're still not fully concealed, but it is a lot better. And when you start talking about uh, big buses and road trips, big rigs, any of these big diesel vehicles, when you can even save just a small, small percentage, if each one of these things only gave us 0 0.3, 0 0.4% improved efficiency, it can all make a difference when you add all of these things together. So why are we transforming a ridiculous bus that went on a rally that had uh, nice little RV stuff and making it more capable of sustained high speeds? You know, some may say that there are a small group of people that like to uh, set records and keep records for uh, crossing distances, you know, one, one coast to another coast. So when we say we make questionable choices, what's more questionable than uh, 